I have so much fun talking yep. to people. I think people are fascinating. They're interesting. I like talking to people. And if you can't get your head around that and have fun with this, you're going to quit. You're, you're going to quit every it. time. Yep. It's not about me. It's not about Jerry. It's not about you guys. It's about the seller. And when you can genuinely convey that, you'll realize your questions start changing and it starts to change the answers and the trajectory of the conversation. Welcome back, guys. This is video two in the How to Be a Real Estate Closer series that I'm doing with Daniel Quijano. Daniel, thank you for being back here with me on this video. Guys, I'm really excited about what we're going to be doing on this video and some subsequent videos. We're actually going to take a live call I did uh, in a competition that Daniel put on over in the Sub2 community. It was called the Closers Octagon. Yep. And it was a it was a group of, what was it, 10 people maybe? Something like yeah, that? Yeah, 10 that made it. 200 or so tried out. Only 10 made it. Okay. And I was one of them. And it was basically, you got leads and you called all day long. There was a judge that was listening to you. People could come into a room and listen to you on the phones. And then there was a grading scale. And, and so it was a it was a competition to close deals. And so I've got the call recordings on some of the deals that I did and some of the calls that I did. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up one of those one of those calls right now. We're going to listen. And as we listen, we're going to pause we're going to talk about what just happened, why that just happened. Uh, Daniel's going to critique me maybe or give me feedback. I'm going to explain why I did what I did and, and make this just a really good learning experience on a real call with a real yeah. seller. And so I'm pretty excited about doing this because I think it's, uh, I just love, like, I love moving out of theory and going into application because yeah. I think that's how people learn the best. And so we're going to do that. Now, what I also want to do is I want uh, Jeff pull up on the screen here as we go through this the five tonalities that I do when I ask questions. And again, just so you guys know, it's, it's curious, it's confused, it's challenging, it's uh, cheerful or playful. And I always, I always miss one. Let me look at my notes real quick, which one I'm missing. Um, curious, confused, concerned, and concerned. So a concerned type of question. And so as I go through and you hear me ask questions, I want you to, I, we'll stop and pause a little bit, but I want you to pause at home watching this and say, okay, what kind of question was he asking there? What was his tonality? Was he, was he confused? Was he cheerful? Was he, how was he doing it? So that you can start to see what this looks like and feels like in, in real life, yep. okay? So without further ado, let's jump let's into one of these it. calls. I'm excited. Okay, it's an 18 minute call. And so this, this is gonna be a long video because we're gonna stop and talk about it, but let's just, let's just go right in this. Now to set the context, you gotta understand where these leads are coming from, because the, the way that I approach my initial introduction is very strategic based on the lead type. Yeah. Okay. So these were PPL, pay per lead. Okay. So what happened here was, um, what's the company that you remember? The REI guys? conveyor belt. Okay. REI conveyor belt. So what happened is, is they did, I think probably Google ads. They got, a, is that right? Yeah, they have, they have a number of different things. They had PPLs, okay. but then they also, have a, they also have a call center where they do about 3 million dials a week. Okay, so these leads were warmed up. Yep, they were warmed so up. So they had already had a call with somebody. Somebody said, yes, I want to sell. They compiled some notes and then sent those leads over. Correct. So, so remember, I'm not, this isn't their initial conversation about selling their house. It's their second conversation. Yep. That matters because the way I'm going to approach the call is going to be very different than if it was like, I'm cold calling somebody. Sure. Yeah. hundred percent. Okay. So it's important that you know that listening to this, cause you're going to be like, Whoa, why did you start out the call like that? That's not how I would start out a call or how you maybe normally would. Yeah, correct. Okay. So let's, let's let, and hopefully, uh, we can capture this audio. Hello. Is this Johnny? Yeah. Yes, sir. Hi Johnny. How are you doing, sir? Thanks for calling uh, back. Good. Yeah. I was calling you about your property on Baylor Boulevard. You still looking to yeah. sell that? Yes, I am. Fantastic. We're looking to buy right now. Hopefully we can help you out. Okay. So initially I said, I'm calling for so-and-so about this property. Are you still looking to sell this property? Now that would not be how you would start a cold call conversation, right? Sure. So I just want to maybe, maybe set the tone here that yeah. I'm just confirming. So what I like to do when I get like a paper lead or an, or an inbound lead, and now I'm calling that lead is I want to start out really by just being very direct is, is, are you this person? Is this your property? Are you still looking to sell? Any thoughts on that? Or is that pretty straightforward? No, I, think, I think it's straight to the point. I like that you, you, know, you, you, you ask them the question. It's going to open up the conversation and kind of go yeah. from there. Yeah. Okay. Now watch what I do. That's very different. Not a lot of people do it this way. What are you hoping to get for this property? Okay. So guys, we're in the first 18 seconds and I'm asking price. Yeah. Now, what do you think about that? I love what, it. Okay. Elephant Why? in the room. 
Okay. Guys, you're going to talk about the price. There's two scenarios where I, I want to have it. I'm going to either ask it right away when they bring it up in the conversation, or I'm going to redirect when they ask me, what's your offer? Right? I'm going to say the exact same thing. If they say, oh, what's your offer? I'm going to say the same thing you said right there. It's the elephant in the room. Just yeah. get it out of the way. It's going to yeah. have to happen. And remember, these are people that raise their hand. They already talked to somebody. They said they want to sell. Why am I not asking what's the price you want? You've already said you wanted to sell. So what's your price? Yep. Uh, now, this sometimes gets a great response and sometimes it doesn't. Again, the seller might be savvy and be like, well, so you'll hear all kinds of different responses from sure. this, but I don't make it awkward. So this is where people are like, man, you're asking the price right out of the gate. That's awkward. I, I'm uncomfortable doing that. Don't I need to build some trust first? It's not that you can't ask price later or build rapport first. It's not that that's bad. Um, but again, time is money to me. Yep. And they've already said they want to sell. They've already identified themselves. I kind of want to get right to it with yep. somebody. Because if they're like, if, if what they want and they're unrealistic and we're not going anywhere, I'd rather find out about that sooner than 100%. later. 100%. Okay. I'm trying to be in the range of 260 to 265. Okay. Look at that. You he just said, said 10, I'm 15 to... minutes of babbling on about random stuff. Yeah. Now you guys are at the, the nuts and bolts. We're at 22 seconds in, and he says, I want to be at 260 to 265. Yeah. He just told me his number. One of the rules that I say, and there's a lot of approaches you can have. I did an intro training in my community. It was a two and a half hour training on intros. And the two and a half hour training was about the first 10 seconds mm -hmm. of the conversation. Yeah. Why? Because it matters. Yeah. How you, it, it, it sets the trajectory of the entire conversation or if you even get to have a conversation. And my, what I always say is you want, you want that conversation to be five to 10 seconds max. That intro needs to be five to 10 seconds. You're 20 seconds in and you already have a number. I already have a number. Right. Now, I don't know if it's a good number, but sure. the seller just told me the number he wants. Yep. Right. So that's how powerful I think this is. Don't be afraid to ask price. Yep. Okay. 260 to 265. Okay. What, what has you thinking that number? I'm just looking at Zillow and Zillow's calling it 203. I'm just wondering. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So remember our questions. What, which one would that be? If you're listening to this right now. Confused? Confused. Yeah. And so what did I do? Now, what I do every time I call on a property is I pull up Zillow and I'm just looking at it. Yep. Now you'll see I do other things with what I gather on Zillow. But what was the question I asked? I said, okay, you're at 260, 265. Zillow's saying it's worth 203. Where are you getting your number? Now, guys, we're 33 seconds in, and it could be challenging too. I'm sort of yeah. challenging him a yep. little bit, yep. and I'm challenging him like, "Where are you coming up with your number?" Now, I'm not doing. I'm not being too aggressive right now. I'm, but I have no rapport. I haven't built trust. Anything. I'm just trying to be real. Yep. Just trying to be real. Like, dude, you're right. You want 265, and I'm seeing 203. You called us that you want to sell your house. Like, what's yeah. going on here? Sure. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, don't, I got another one. It's called X Homes, and it's pricing, pricing it at 280 It was appraised, you said? No, it's pricing at 280 And then I had it appraised last, not last year, but. So let me stop right there. He said I had something valued at 250 and it kind of cut out. I don't know what he said. Yeah, it sounded almost like he said he had a different property, maybe? It sounded sort of like that. Yeah. But I think what he was saying is I came up with a value at 280 Okay. somewhere. You know, okay. even though Zillow called it 203. Now, again, we, Zillow doesn't mean they're right, but it's just a number that's sure. giving it a value. Well, here's, here's what I love about this. It's confusing, right? Yeah. It, like, they're it's not, an interrupter. It's, right? It, like, it's, it, like, not everything's going to be a perfectly laid out conversation where they're ready to, you know, yeah. things are going to pop up. So then he says, oh, and I had it appraised. So let's hear about this. Uh, well, yeah, last year, we're in the new year. Um, uh -huh. And it, 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 it appraised for 250. 250. Um, okay. So think about this, guys. If you're gathering information, <laughs> it appraised for 250. I want 260 to 265. Okay. Now, those, most people would be like, this is not a deal. Come yeah. out. Yep. I, this is actually one of the contracts I got. Really? Yeah. Okay. 50, but I'm trying to get at least 260, 265 because I'm trying to get some land and have a little extra money on us to do some stuff we got to do to it. Gotcha. That makes sense. So he says, I want to buy some land. Okay. So guys, remember you're gathering information. Now I'm listening and I'm thinking as he says things, I'm gathering information and then I'm going to tailor my questions using one of the five tones. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me ask you, try, have you thought about payment life? What's that? Just trying to get out of the payment life. 
Oh, okay. Now that changed everything. I was yep. about to ask a question and guess what he said? I'm just trying to get out of my payment. Yep. Okay, now creative finance guys are gonna are jumping up yep. and down right now, right? Yep. Because what is that triggering? Yep. I mean, like, like right there, like that's the pot of gold. It's the pot of gold. That's the pot of gold. I mean, you now all you have to do is you need to intentionally listen. I, I, I'm assuming you're going to do the same thing, but in my head, now I'm just, that's the road I'm going down and I'm painting the picture as to why I actually have your perfect solution. Yeah. So guys, if you don't know creative financing, then you're limited on what you can do right now. So guys that just do low cash offers, they would have missed that and they, yep. this would be a no deal. Mm -hmm. Not even close. Because that's his pain. His pain is I'm trying to get out of my payment. Yep. That's a sub two. Yep. He's got a mortgage payment that he wants to get out of. So I was, I was about to ask a question. He said something. I said, wait, what? He said, I'm trying to get out of my payment. Now watch where I go with this. Yep. Now, it's all about the questions at the right time. Guys, I've not listened to this call. Pay very close attention here because this is where a lot of people, this is where we talk about having a good foundation, but then being able to get away from the foundation for a second to follow the conversation, focus on the conversation you're having. Because if your goal is to help people, the best way to help them is to listen to them and then say, okay, well, if the most important thing to you is payment, why am I going to talk about these low cash offers? This is not a cash offer conversation. I can, it's a payment I conversation. I completely moved away from a cash offer. Yeah, yeah. love it. Oh, okay. What's your payment on it? Uh, it was it was seventeen, but uh, I paid a lot to my escrow account this year, so I went down to fifteen. Well, I mean, what's your balance owed on your loan? Oh, I owe about two ten on it. Okay. So, you guys, catching this. I want 260, 265, I owe 210, 210 or 211. Yeah. So now I know his principal balance on yep. his loan. And he said, I want to get out of my payment. And his payment's $1,500. Yep. So I'm, I'm going right down sub two now. Yeah. Okay. So again, now that, so now that you understand the strategy, now I can ask the right questions. Yep. But you got to have enough of a foundation to ask the right questions. Yep. Okay hoping you can sell it, pay off your loan, and put a little cash in your pocket. Correct. Okay, so I asked a question. Are you hoping to sell it, pay off your loan, and put a little cash in your pocket? That was the question I yep. asked him. Again, I'm trying to understand. I'm confirming. He said, I want to get out of the payment. Okay, so is what you're trying to do, sell it, pay off your loan, and get a little cash in your pocket. And I see that you had it he listed said yes. for 270 and 245, 225, 215, and then removed a couple months ago. Yeah, because I... Okay, so what's the question there? Now, I'm on Zillow. And what did I see on Zillow? It was active. He was way up here. He did a bunch of price drops, and then it was removed. So this is me listening now. I'm on Zillow. I'm trying to understand what this guy's doing. He asked. He was asking over retail, over his... He gave me the appraised price. He's asking over that. It didn't sell. So he now is an expired listing. Yeah. So, so how do I catch that? I want to I want to say, take a second to talk about something that's really important. I've seen this a million times um, in just our coaching calls, right? And it's a really bad habit I noticed that people get into. I'm going to ask you a question. I've never asked you this before. I, I'm pretty sure I know the answer. How much time do you take researching a property before you dial the phone number? Twenty seconds. Okay. Thirty so, seconds. So you're not doing a full underwrite and review and going not back easily. and forth and looking the history, right? No, no, not that that not that there's a whole lot wrong with that. Um, but again, I got to get through calls and if I'm spending an hour on, on comping and stuff like that, I'm only going to do five calls today. That's it. And that's one thing we, I really, really strongly encourage people just get on the phone, right? Because the, the stuff that you, that, that Jerry's doing, you can do on the call. Yeah. All of the research that you think you need to know is probably actually more powerfully deployed live, right? So what do I mean? If I'm doing a bunch of research in advance and then I'm having the conversation, okay, well, I just spent 20 minutes researching a call that may not even answer, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yes. You know, you've done that or you've oh, actually already sold that. It's just not updated. So it's just like, don't do that. But here's the more powerful thing. When you're sitting here, it's powerful to have a natural, real reaction to what you're seeing. So when, when, this, when the seller says, oh, well, this is what happened. Well, I'm looking at this. I can naturally respond and say, well, that's interesting. I'm looking here and it says this happened. You don't realize the value in having those authentic conversations live in the moment because it just sounds, it, it sounds authentic and people react differently to that. Yeah, definitely. So I asked him, I said, well, I see you were listed, did a bunch of price drops, then removed it. And so let's hear his response. We had a, we had a buyer uh, coming in at 250, 
two fifty. Two fifty. And then that, yeah, two fifty, and then that just uh, that fell through. And then okay. I, I never heard from the people I was trying to get to sell the house, so I just said. No, we both think the same thing okay. when he says that, right? Like, <laughs> okay, so guys, I'm get, we're gathering information here. Yep. What would you do right now? So, so I'm, I'm so curious. I hope you guys are like trying to follow here. If you were in my shoes right now, and he says, we got an offer, we had a buyer for 250 mm -hmm. and they fell through. Yeah. Now, what he goes on to say is, I think... I, is there a way to do like a poll in the live? So people I would, say, I what would, like, yeah. if what would you could, do? What would you do here? If right? not, at least pause and, and think about it. Yep. Like pause right now and think, what would I do with that information? How would that be helpful? Yep. Okay, so you, automatically, here's where I went with it. You got a 250 offer that you accepted. That means you are okay to gross 250 and net... Mm -hmm. After commissions and closing fees and a 210 mortgage, mm -hmm. you're only walking away with a handful of cash. Yep, 15, $20,000. I hyper focus on that. Yep, yep. Watch how I watch what how I hyper focus on that. Hey, just take it off the market because y'all ain't helping me out. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's the thing you don't have it with an agent anymore, right? So I confirm it's not listed because I don't want to be dealing with, yeah. I can't compete if it's listed. Sure. I got to talk to the agent, right? Yeah. So I ask, is it still listed? No, no, I'm just okay. No, not knowing anything. Okay, I got an idea for you. This might fit really well with what you're looking to do. Now, one thing about that too is uh, I always say this might because mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, yep. I got to pencil it, I got to underwrite it, I got to whatever. But but I might have a solution for you that's a good fit. I use those exact words. I almost yeah. never speak in definites yeah. because even if somebody, I know this is a deal, right? And this yeah. is a home run. I'm not gonna say, oh great, congratulations, I can I can buy this yeah. house. I'm not doing that. No, right? because this, they're going to feel like they left money on the table. That's exactly it. So I don't care if I'm jumping up and down on yeah. the inside. I'm going to say, you know what? I might. Let me run that some numbers. Yeah. yeah, let me see. <laughs> let's say that that 250 offer came through. Like, let's just say that they moved, they, they went to closing, yeah. right? You would have paid around 25000 in closing fees because you're going to pay six, six to an agent, right? To the agent, you know, another couple thousand dollars to closing fees and so on, maybe more like eight, but so you probably pay about $20,000. So at 250, you really net 230 and you owe 210. So you would have walked with 20. You guys see the math? See what I did? Yep. I just, I just reversed what he willingly accepted. Yep. He accepted 250, which means he's walking with 230, which means he owes 210. So at closing, if that deal would have happened, he'd have walked out of there with 20 grand. Yeah. Meaning he's okay to make 20 grand on the deal. Yep. I just, I just, he, we just did the math. And it's just the math. Numbers, right? Sometimes you just got to say it out loud because people make decisions without really thinking it through and sometimes saying it out loud. That's actually one of the best ways to overcome objections sometimes is just to repeat back what mm -hmm. they said out yep. loud so they hear how it oh, sounds. Oh, I do it multiple times because yep. I want to make sure they're following, especially with creative finance. Yep. I'll walk through it again and again yep. until I know they get it. Yep. Okay. So, so guys, think about where we're going with this. I'm going sub two, but does this seller understand sub two? High mm -hmm. chance not. Nope. So how do I explain this in a way to where he gets it? Yep. But guess what my offer is going to be? You guys that understand creative, guess what my offer is going to be? 20,000 cash at closing. There you go. He was willing to take that. So listen yep. to how I tailor that. If that deal went through, right? Great, yeah. Well, I got an idea for you that might work. What if I just paid you 20,000 at closing? That's what you would have got anyway. But then rather than come up with all the money and a new loan and and you know, go to my investors for cash and all that. What if I just took over your payment? Pause. So guys, uh, pausing is a huge thing too. I see this in sales a lot where people are so nervous that they, that they're, the awkward silence is a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. An awkward no. silence is powerful. Yep. Just ask the question and wait. Yep. Let that seller there's a, there's, a, there's a saying, and if you guys are old school sales people or ever done any hardcore sales, you've heard this line. It says, he who talks first loses. loses. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's just, it's the law of it. And I, to reiterate what you said, silence is uncomfortable, but it is a superpower. You got to play with that silence. Because here's the thing. Silence is the great equalizer. It'll get all of that stuff out. If you fill the silence then they're not going to be the one that's opening up or asking, the, right? You need to let them have that experience. Yeah.
Yeah, because all you're doing now is steamrolling and mm-hmm. they're going to say, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yep. And do, they, do they really comprehend? You don't know because yep. you're not allowing them time. And if you went through all the trouble of asking a really good, powerful question and then you let them back out of having to answer it, well, then what's the point yeah. of the powerful question? Let right. them answer it. So I know there's a good chance that he's not comprehending what I just said, but I'm asking for comprehension and I'm waiting and allowing him time to think about how he would respond. Yep. Because you get the 20 still, I pay you, so I would pay you 20,000 and then I would just take over your loan of 210. And then I take full responsibility for the property, so taxes, insurance, all of it. I give you 20,000 at closing, I pay the closing fees and you get to walk away with, from the property. Um, that, so basically I'll just, so, you just so now, because I allowed him to think, he's like, um, so and now he's asking me a question. Yeah. So now I know he's trying to understand. He didn't just shut it off. Yep. So he didn't just close it down. He's trying now he's trying to understand, right? But guys, we're we're less than four minutes in. Insane. Less than four minutes in. Already negotiating a creative deal. Yeah. Okay, my 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 lease over basically. Okay, so he said so you'll take my lease over. Now you're gonna get weird stuff from sellers. So I, I'm just calm about stuff, right? So listen, I'm like, what are you talking um, about? Well, I take over your loan. Because you have I a loan. loan, for, loan. Yeah, you have a loan yeah. for 210. Yeah, you have a balance on your loan for 210, right? Uh, it, well, at that time, it was 210. I don't I don't know what it is. I can look to see what it is now. But it was, uh, it came down a lot because of my interest is 2.65. So a lot of it doesn't go to. So I don't care if it's 209 or 2. I mean, it doesn't yeah. matter, right? But he's just trying to be specific. Yeah, you got a great. Yeah, you got a great interest rate. So see, oh, that's you why missed this that. Would make a- okay, uh, I was talking. He said, I have a 2.6 interest rate. That's insane. That's like a creative finance person's wedding yeah, yeah. right there. 100%. You know, like 2.6 rate. 100%. 2.6 rate. Yeah. 2, <laughs> 2.6 rate. Like, guys, 2.6? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Enough said. That's why this would make a lot of sense for me because if I buy your house and I come in with new financing, I'm going to be paying a whole lot higher than 2.65 interest. Correct. Okay. Yeah, you're going to be like five, six, six. Yeah. Interest. So then I got to buy your house for way cheaper to offset the high interest. But if I can, if I can take over your loan, then I can, I can pay the 250, and it's the same as if you sold it for 250 with a real estate agent because you're going to walk away with 20. So I'll just give you the 20, just like you would have got if you sold it with an agent, right? Yeah. And then that works for me because then I take over the loan. I don't have to come, I only have to come up with 20,000 to pay you plus some closing costs. You know, then I can turn around and and rent the property and do what we do. Okay, let me stop it there. So let me explain a little bit about what what I'm doing here because not everybody does this with creative finance, but what I found is um, most sellers, when you explain that you're willing to do creative, um, they automatically are confused at why you would pay top price. Yeah. So what I help them do is I help them understand, look, I, I try to create a, a uh, disparity between the cash and then creative. Yeah. And the way that I do that is I say, look, if I were to come in with all cash, because that cash is expensive and I got to go to my investors and or if I get new financing, I'm going to be paying a way higher rate. I would have to be significantly lower, but if you if you're okay with me taking over your payment, I can pay your number. Yep. And I think yep. for me anyway, I feel like that helps the seller understand why you're even offering and willing to offer retail. Yeah, uh, I think that's super important too because guys, when you're having conversations with sellers, especially if you're going into something that's complicated, I don't think the solu- I think people think that the solution for creative finance is to break down all of the legal details right because that's what's going to make people feel better and it's not right they don't they don't need that 99 times out of 100 what they need is it just needs to make sense make it make sense okay well here's why on a simple level if i do it this way here's what happens and make give them a a valid justification people just need to need it to make sense and it's not it's really not that complicated so separating that it's it's powerful and and you get to go and move on in life okay um if we if uh i'm just trying to so my, my, I got to my, my balance. It's actually, it's only a grand more. It's 211,487. 211. Yeah, that's fine. So, uh, yeah, I'll still pay you 20. How, how long, how long, if I 
I got I got to speak to the wife when I get home first. But if we agree to all this, how long will it take to get done, and how fast do I got to move out of the property? Okay, so he's asking a question here now, right? His question is how long to close. Yep. Okay, now. How would you answer that right now? If you're listening to this right now, your, your job is to solve problems. How yep. would you answer that? He's asking me, well, how long does all this take? How long till we close? Yeah. You're living in there now, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You tell me that we can do it whenever it's convenient for you. I mean, ideally 30 days. Is that enough time? Well, I just... Okay, so I said, when it's convenient for you, how's yep. 30 days sound? You know, so now, now I'm going back into questions. Yep to try to understand what's important to you. If he tells me 60 days, okay, 60 days, right? Because again, why my job is to solve his problems and make this convenient for him. Yep. I just got a, I got, so I had a piece of property when all this shit was happening. Fell uh -huh. through, they sold it, which pissed me off because it was a pretty, it was five acres, pretty nice property. Uh, so I'm just trying to, I'm gonna have to look for another piece of property. Uh, see what price range I can get it at, if I could get it a good deal, and then uh, get everything moved out into it or finding an RV for a little bit to put on the property until we do all that. I'm just really trying to just get out of the payment life. I'm trying to own Again, get out of the to payment. Get yep. cash. That's why I'm trying to get Yeah. Okay, so let me kind of summarize what he's saying here. I think he wants to buy some land and put an RV on it. Yeah. And he needs some cash to buy the land and put an RV on it. Mm -hmm. and, th and this is like rural Texas yeah. where this is at here. And I want to get out of my payment. And so whenever I'm dealing with a seller and it's occupied, their next move is very important to me. Yeah. Because think about it. If it's vacant, it's easy. No one's there. We close. Not a problem. But if someone's living there, sometimes that's resistance because they got to pack. They got to move. Yep. They don't know where they're going. And so now it becomes very important to me in my information gathering and questioning to know where, when we sell, when we close, what are you doing? Where are you going? Yeah. Because I need to know if that's a problem I need to solve. Yep. And here's the thing, uh, guys, imagine if you knew the sellers personally or you had insight into their personal circumstance, then a lot of times what we would offer, the way we would approach the conversation would change, right? Because we have more insight. We wouldn't be as surface level in our conversations. But this is why the act of listening, and this is why really paying attention makes a big difference because what it does, if you listen and you ask good questions, is you start to get the insight into their circumstance. And so what I hear when I hear this guy is one, at the very beginning, he said payment was his thing, right? We both mm -hmm. caught that, we both yeah. picked up on that. Okay, that's where we're focusing. Well, now he's bringing it up again. Yeah. So what that tells me is this is a conversation you're having in your life on a daily basis. This is what you talk to your wife or your friends and your family about it. Okay, well now you're saying that payment, you wanna get out of the payment life, you wanna go get a piece of land, you wanna go put an RV on the piece of land, you don't really care. Okay, well now I'm getting a profile as to the type of person that I'm dealing with. And this type of person has certain things that are and are not important to them. And so now I can start to tailor what I'm offering to a thing that's something that's important to this person. This, this guy is not gonna be impressed by a nice fancy car or a nice Chanel bag. He doesn't care about stuff like that, right? He wants you to have his problem solved. He wants it to be simple. And he wants to be able to go and live his life. And so when you tailor your conversation like that, what happens? He starts to feel understood. He starts to trust you. This is why it's so important, right? Because when you begin to get, you begin to get a feel, right? A sense of what's happening. Now you're solving the problem that they have, not the problem that, you're, that you think they have, right? And what happens is when you start to address what they have according to their need, they start to feel understood, they start to feel safe, and that's how they want to do the deal with you and not anybody else. Yeah, and it's really like overcoming objections. So he presented an objection by saying, how long does this take? Now, a seller doesn't ask, when do we close, unless he's concerned about when we close. Yep, that's so what now, they call buying questions. In this case, selling questions. Selling questions, yeah. But why is he asking that question? He's asking that question because it's a concern of his. Maybe he wants to close sooner. Maybe he wants to close later. I don't know. So now I have to go back into discovery yep. I have to find out, well, why? Why are you even asking this? Yeah. Now he's talking about land and an RV and I'm just listening. I'm trying to understand what's going on here. Yeah. You know, one of the things I love that, that you did there, and it's crazy, guys. Here's one of the things I want to really emphasize. When you do this enough time, you'll begin to realize that there's universals that just stick, right? Never done a seller call with you. We've never, like, this is a very mm -hmm. new thing. 
So many of the things you do are exactly how I would phrase them. Here's what's crazy. When I give these examples to people, like in my course, they're like mind blown. Like, oh my, I would have never thought about doing that. One of the things that you did in my head, the most natural response is how long does it take to close? How long do you need? How long do you need? Right? Like, because I want to understand what's important to mm -hmm. you. It's not about me. It's not about Jerry. It's not about you guys. It's about the seller. And when you can genuinely convey that, you'll realize your questions start changing and it starts to change the answers and the trajectory of the conversation. Yeah. Like when I say, is 30 days enough time? Yep. Well, I'm going to find out if no, it's got to be sooner or no, it's got to be later. Like we're going to yep. start to uncover things. Not everybody wants to close in five days. Not everybody does. Yep. Yeah. So let's, so let's see how we... Cause I think he goes on more about this. At least that 20 grand, 30 grand. Cause even acreage is a, it's coming down I've seen, but it ain't, it ain't cheap, you know? Yeah. So you want to buy so some land, you want to buy some land that you can what build on or, or RV on or what do you, is that what you're thinking? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting so questions. Like, my housing, I, I spent about, 25, maybe three grand a month with all the utilities, internet, the house payment. Try to save that up and there's all, there's cheap mobile homes out there. Like I said, I'm just trying to get it where yeah. I, I own the shit. So, uh, well, what would be best for you? It, you, you? Okay. So here's what I'm gathering. He wants that 20 grand and with 20 grand, he wants to buy a lot and a mobile home or an mm -hmm. RV and get out of all of his like housing expense. Yep. Did you guys gather that? I mean, that's, is that what you gathered? That's it. That's kind of what I gathered. Them. Yeah. Maybe kind of start living off the land, not yeah. have to worry about anything. Yeah. Yep. So that's kind of where, and then I asked a question. So is what you're trying to do this? So that's the thing guys, when you get, when they say something, don't automatically think that you know what they just said. Make sure you're comprehending, ask a question. Yep. Recap what they just said and ask a question. I asked so many questions. I bet you if you took this 18 minute call, I might have asked 50 questions, 100 yep. questions. I'm just constantly trying to understand. Yep. Guys, and one thing I really, to like really focus on this, I think a lot of times a newer person would have started this call and what they would have heard if they even got to the number as quickly as you did, 265, I can't do 265. What about 265? Yeah. But all of a sudden, magically, we're not talking about $265,000. We're talking about Twenty thousand dollars. Oh, we're talking about twenty grand. So That's 20, all now this, it just in five minutes is a twenty thousand dollar deal. It's twenty thousand dollars is That's all it. it takes. Yeah, yep. you're so, that's such a good point. Yeah, because you get down to the core of it. That's exactly it. You need you need thirty days or longer than thirty days. So are, are you thinking like sixty days? I mean, I just I'll make it convenient for you as long as I know we got a deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that, if, that, if everything if the wife's good with it, I'm gonna talk to her when I get home. I'm about to be on the way home, and if she's good with it. I'm I'm down to sign everything. I don't know if I get the, the money after I move out or how y'all do that. I'm down to sign it, whatever, whatever. <laughs> pay me whatever uh, for some land and yeah, get well, that you'd... in the book to get that ready. Yeah, what you'd want to do is whenever we close, that's when we bring the cash to the closing, and then you would get it at the closing when we transfer ownership. You know, from from you to me, then you'd Correct. walk out with twenty grand. So you could, what you could do is line up your next thing to happen. As long as it happens after our closing, then you're fine, right? Because then you'll have the 20 grand. Okay, so what am I doing? I'm, I'm trying to overcome this objection of his next move. And I'm trying to tell him, look, you can go find that land you want, line it all up, close right after we close, and you could take the cash and go buy the land and put your RV on it or whatever you want to do. Yeah. And so again, I'm just trying to then solve a problem. Yeah. Correct. Now let me ask you: Is the twenty grand the highest? Like, so y'all y'all gotta make a profit. Y'all gotta. Okay, so he asked me: Is twenty grand the most you can pay? Yeah. Typical question, right? Sure. Like, is that the best? Yep. I mean, I always ask: Is that the lowest you can take? He's asking: Is that the highest you'll pay? Yeah. And then, so guys, if you get asked that question, you're gonna get asked that question. Yeah. What, what? How would you answer that? That's it. Pause right now and think: What would I say if that were me right now? What would I say? Because that's gonna happen. Yep. Look good in numbers. It's twenty grand. Like the hey man, this is it. Or yeah. Now before I was just thinking here. Um, I already know he'll take twenty. How do mm -hmm. I know that? Because he said it. Because he said I had it under contract at two fifty, which means he would have made twenty. Yep. And here's the thing. He already started here. Like so. Let's like. I'm big on psychology, right? Let's understand the person. Who are you dealing with, yeah. right? So now that I understand his profile, he's the type of person, he doesn't want the payments. He kind of wants to get out there, maybe live off the land, kind of do his own thing, be unhinged from the things. Okay, cool. 
We already know how much he was willing to take. So mm -hmm. we had his bottom dollar at the beginning of the conversation. Yeah. But something else happened a little bit into the conversation. He got excited and started planning based on the money, right? Oh, yeah. if I give, I think he's, he said 15, 20, that's perfect, yeah. right? But then what happened? Well, he's, he's not stupid. So he's yeah. like, oh, wait, hold on. Maybe, maybe, maybe I left a little bit of money on the table, right? But here's the thing. Most new people are going to get nervous and they're going to hear that as, oh, shoot, now he wants more money. I'm losing the deal. Maybe this isn't going to work. And what's going to happen is you will respond like that. You're going to get nervous and you're going to, in your responses. He's going to stick, stand his ground. And that's how you start losing these deals, right? What you need to do is you need to stay in control of this conversation, yeah. right? Recognize that he already gave you his bottom dollar, right? I don't know what you're going to respond with, yeah. but my guess is this is the, because this, this is the direction you have to go. I can, I can project where Jerry's going to go because there's certain rules that work in this, in this game. And this is just, this is what you have to listen for. Yeah. So guys, I don't give him more money, but listen to how I don't give him more money, okay? 20 grand, yeah. Yeah, my boss, Justin, he's a ball buster. You know who Justin, it was Tumanowski? <laughs> Tumanowski, yeah. 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 So here's what I did, uh, and I do this quite a bit, is um, if I'm the decision maker, then I'm the bad guy. Yep. So if he wants more than 20 grand, and, and it's up to me to give him more than 20 grand, now I just created an adversarial relationship and I'm sure. trying to create a trusting relationship. Sure. So I was very playful about this. Now I was messing around because Justin was on the Zoom and I could see him on my screen. I was just trying to be funny and yeah. play with him. But I'll do a similar type of thing where, hey, I'm not the decision maker here. Yeah. Now not, not, you don't have to do it this way and not everybody maybe does it this way. But what I want to do is I want to remove me from being the bad guy. Yeah. Guy, okay. he's tough. Because yeah, yeah. we have to, you have to understand, I've got to bring an investor in to, for the money, right? For the 20 grand. Yeah. And my boss, Justin, he's going to be all over me about this because, you know, you want to be in at a low enough percentage of the purchase. And so I'm paying, uh -huh. two, I'm paying 250. So 20 grand a little, is actually kind of high for where we like to be. On the so 20 is actually kind of high, you know, like that's yeah. where I'm coming. So can you pay me more than 20? Well, actually 20 is kind of high. Yeah. Guys, what, I, I have <laughs> not heard this conversation. You know what will probably happen 95 times out of 100 people like this? They're going to shoot their shot as they should, right? Then they're going to say, oh, okay, right? And then, you know, they may sound a little can disappointed. You do, can you do 25? Can you do this, right? Yeah. And they're going to try. But then at the end of the day, they're go if you can make it make sense, they start to realize, well, hey, okay. I was already here. I was okay with this in the first place, right? But the key to this, guys, here's the key. And I don't know what you guys answered in your what would what, WWJD, what would Jerry do? <laughs> <laughs> in, your, in your what would Jerry do question a couple minutes ago. But when you hear questions like this, understand that it doesn't matter what, what you do. There's, there's a rule that I have in sales. Two most important things in every single conversation. Do you, you want to take a shot? Guess at what they are? No, I'm okay. curious. Confidence and control. Okay. Love Confidence that. and control. So true. Without that, you may stumble upon a deal, yeah. but you're not consistently controlling mm -hmm. the deal. But with those things, you can take everything else away. Yeah. You give me confidence and control, I can get any deal done. Yeah. And I'm totally in control yep. and I'm totally confident about this or where I'm going with yep. this, right? And you can feel it. He feels it. Whereas if you're all timid and, oh, well, well, yep. how much more would you want? I didn't once say, how much more would you want? Yep. Or will you take 25? Yeah. Nothing. Yep on these, but it looks like a nice property. You know, it looks like a great area, great neighborhood. Is the condition oh, like- it, 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 it is like, I can move out and you can have people move in. Um, Are you leaving and, any uh, furniture? Huh? Are you leaving any furniture? I, I'll tell you right now. And I, and we can, you can take this back to him. If you bump it up to 30, I will leave everything in the fucking house. TVs, furnitures, beds. I'll leave all does that it, shit in Does it look like these pictures on Zillow? No, they, it's, uh, so those pictures on Zillow is when I first bought the house. Um, the only difference is we put tile in the, in bedrooms and we pulled out uh -huh. carpet. So the carpets okay. are out of the room. I mean, we'll take a look at it because maybe, maybe we Airbnb it or something like that. I don't know yet, but maybe we'll take your furniture. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so you guys saw maybe, maybe we'll take your furniture because now he's telling me I'll leave the furniture. All right. Well then 
I want to solve problems. If you don't want your furniture, we'll deal with your furniture. Maybe yep, we'll pay 100%. you for the furniture. Now, I'm not buying his furniture unless it's a deal, right? Yeah. Obviously. Well, and here's the thing. I think that's a smart question. I don't know if this is why you did it, right? But saying something, oh, well, you're going to leave the furniture. What happens is this is something that's big for me, right? I'm big on integrity in my conversations. I'm big on integrity in life, right? And there's a lot of people who'll do kind of like white lie or they'll paint pictures. They'll do story selling in sales. And that's fine. But for me, I've always looked at this as, I want to challenge myself to be the best. How do I just tell the truth in a creative enough way that it's not shocking, even if the truth is shocking, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Because I have this philosophy that a bad truth is better than a good lie. So how do I, but it's all about how I communicate that. So when you have, oh, let's say, for example, and this isn't how this went, obviously, but let's say you had said not $20,000 is my bottom dollar. That's all I can do. And then later you say, oh, I can do 25. Well, now your integrity shot, right? Your integrity. But when you say something like, well, what about that furniture? Mm -hmm. What you're doing is you're padding in that integrity. You're giving yourself, just like everything else, you're giving yourself a reason to make it okay that makes sense to them. Yeah, exactly. And we know he's moving into an RV and I'm looking at Zillow and the house is fully furnished. Yeah. That furniture. What is he going to put in there? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I'll pay a little bit more, but do I get all the furniture? You know, like I'm just trying to go down that road. Give you a number on it, you know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I, I, I agree there. So I said, I don't know. I'll give you a number on it. You know, let's, we could talk about it. Yeah. But if I can get you 20 grand and I can be flexible when we close so it's convenient for you and we take over your loan, I mean, the, the only, the only, I got to go back to my boss, Justin, and his partner, Dan. You should I think see you that guy. Yeah. He's bald. He's like always frowny and mad. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> he's bald. He's always frowning. He's mad. Mad about something. Oh, yeah. I know how that is. You know how bosses are, right? Yeah. In fact, I think, he's, I think he's looking over my shoulder right now. <laughs> you were cracking yeah, up. But I'll tell him this is a 2.65 interest rate, and I think he'll be excited about that. Yeah, I, I did. I did buy the house. So, a- so what I'm doing now is I'm going back to, hey, I got to sell my boss on giving you 20 grand anyway. Like, I don't even know if I can. I'm kind of saying I don't even know if I can do 20 because I got I to gotta make sure that this works. Yep. So 25, more than 20? No way. You know, like I'm yep. not seeing it that way, but I'm, I'm definitely building that case and leading it by the way I'm responding. And this is why... The confidence control is so important. It's one of the, the foundational aspects of it is because, guys, like most of these people don't do real estate for a living every single day. And even if they did, again, you have to make it make sense. And the more control and confidence you have, what you're doing is you're just setting the stage. People will usually accept what is offered to them if what's offered to them makes sense and is fair, right? And so what you're able to do is when you approach it from this situation, you can you can renegotiate the deal. The, the fastest, biggest drop I have, I dropped a deal, $45,000 in four minutes, right? Never talked to the dropped guy before. Dropped on the price. Dropped on the price, yeah. right? Now I've done multiple six figure drops in 30 or 40 minutes, right? Because I'm just, I don't even have to negotiate those numbers. I just, okay, you want this, but have you thought about this, right? They'll do that themselves. But that $40,000, $45,000 in four minutes thing, why did I do that? Because I approached the conversation with such control that they realized I'm not going to win this argument because what they're saying makes Makes sense. sense. So do I want to get the deal done or keep wasting my time with these yahoos that are calling me, don't really know what they're talking about. They can't even close on the deal, right? So when you have the confidence and control, you can drive the conversation wherever you want. They had a great time. Yeah, you did. I told told my interest rate, they're like, you're a fucking liar. I'm like, I'll screenshot my interest rate and send it to you. I'll tell you what, I've seen very few 2.65 interest rates. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So and you're on a 30 year, uh, 30 year fix, right? So I was worried he was on a blue uh, yeah. arm or something. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my saving grace. I think he'll want to do that. Otherwise he won't let me pay two fifty, and he definitely won't let me give you 20 grand. To see what I'm doing? Yep. There's no way. He's gonna, the only yeah. reason why I can even give you 20 is because you got a 2.6 rate. So I'm using, I'm leveraging the information I've gathered yeah. to hold firm at my price. Yeah. But yeah. if I can tell him I got a 2.65 interest rate, and if it looks as nice as these pictures, like if it's a great looking property, and we don't have to come in and spend a bunch of money fixing things up, then 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 I I can get it done. You know what I mean? Yeah. The only the only thing that is bad 
is just a door. So I've got him completely redirected away from more money. Yep. And he's, he's now selling. He's now he's, he's just back selling to you on selling the me on the deal. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I redirected it Jesus. back yeah. to where he's now selling me on why I should buy his property. I just kind of replaced a door. I had okay. I had to go through but, it. That that. But other than that, everything is. But roof's good. Uh, kitchen's good. Floors are like everything else roof, is good. Roof, Roof was just replaced in 2021, so it's a brand new roof. Great. And and tell me again, what, what was your total payment? Fifteen hundred. Your principal interest, uh, taxes, it, insurance. It it, 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 it was uh, it went down to fifteen fifty. Fifteen fifty. Okay. Yeah, y'all in Texas have to pay a lot of taxes for some reason there. Yeah, it's stupid as shit. Property taxes. So yeah, my interest rate is two point six two five percent. 2.625. That's insane. I don't know if we'll ever see those days again. No. <laughs> the other thing I'm doing here is I'm propping him up. Yep. Right? So I always, you always want to build up them to be smart and intelligent mm -hmm. and making the good decision. It makes them feel good. Makes people feel good. When, yep. If you make people feel good, they want to be with you. They want to interact with you. They want to yep. do business with you because you're making them feel good. If I belittle them or make them feel stupid or I you know, back them into a corner, then the wall goes back up. Yep, exactly. Well, hey, I know you got to talk it over with your wife, but uh, what I'd here's what I'd love to do. I got a helper over here, and when we hang up, she'll reach out to you, and she can put together an agreement, and it'll just spell out basically what we talked about. Okay. Um, but, I mean, the thing is, is if you were already under contract. Okay. Now is where I'm going down urgency. Okay. So one of the things I'm, one of the reasons why I didn't say this earlier, one of the reasons why I think I'm really good at closing is I always create a lot of urgency. Because if you don't create urgency, then it's another phone call away yep. and time kills all deals. Yep. And I know that. I, I know that when, if we hang up this phone and we don't have a deal put in place, then every minute that goes by after that is, yep. is it decreases my chances of getting the contract. Yep. So I always look for some way to create urgency. So let's see, let's see how I do it. Contract for 250 and the wife was good with that and you were gonna walk at that number with 20. You know, I don't really see why this would make much of a difference. It's, it's basically the same thing. You're gonna walk away with 20 grand in your pocket, no matter how you, either way, whether you did it that way or this way. So it's kind of like, but it's just- Correct. Like, you know, okay, so did you guys catch what I said? So I basically went back to, you were okay to make 20 before, this is the same thing. You're still making 20. It's the same thing. Yeah. So what is there to talk about with the wife? Yeah. Because remember, he said, I got to talk it over with my wife. Now, I know and you know that it's sub two, so that's different than selling it outright. Of course. So that's probably what he would need to talk to the wife about. But you still have to shut that door. But I'm still going back to that objection. And yep. what I'm trying to find out is, uh, you know, if you talk to the wife and she's okay with this, are you ready to go move forward? So what I want, I'm just trying to remove the barriers to see if we're serious here yeah you know it's a wash though yeah it's just com talking to her because at first she was iffy iffy about it when we uh when i was first doing it and then she kind of got on board um but not to be a dick to my wife i love her but at the end of the day my name's on that on that paper and my, i'm alone <laughs> all right if i can figure out a way to have me and my family have more money and less stress I'd rather do that. Yeah, totally. Well, let's get let's get this done then. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna assume it goes well with your wife, you know, and I'm gonna have my assistant here, El Ella. Her name's Ella. She's a rock star. She'll send yeah. you a text before she calls, but her name's Ella. She's gonna give you a call and and put it put an agreement together. Um, the only thing is, I just gotta move kind of quick because my boss they're they're like trying to buy a house like really aggressively right now. So if I if we wait, I might miss out on it. And then, you know, I won't, you, you won't get it. I won't get it. And it'll just kind of be a, a missed opportunity. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm about to buy some shit from my wife here at the store that I'm headed home and talking to her. I'm buy her some, fly, home. I'm listen, buy her some flowers, buy her some flowers. Oh, I already did that the other day. <laughs> so now, now I'm being playful. Yeah. Right? I'm just trying to be playful now. I'm, Right now, what I'm trying to do is solidify my my trust with him, solidify our relationship, create more of a bond, help him feel more connected to me, me connected to him, so that we can get this deal done. Yeah. Because right? we're there. We're like there. Yeah. Right? <laughs> no, I think she's going to be for it because she wants to, she, she, she's been talking about living off the grid and everything. So, um, 
You try chocolate it. then. You try chocolate. You can't yep. go wrong with chocolate. Oh no, no, no. You never can. So But no, I'm pretty sure let's get the agreement sent out. Uh and I'll show her look. We're gonna get twenty grand cash or twenty grand a check. That's gonna be everything. We don't have to worry about anything. They'll take everything over and we can start looking so for So he's selling himself now. Yep. Paying cash for everything because I I don't want payments. I'd rather do taxes at the end of the year, great, but I I wanna try to and save some money. After we get after we get our agreement in place let me know what you're looking for too because i know a lot of investors and we come across a lot of properties we, we might be able to find you something you're looking for that fits yeah I, so the property i found before offering solution the yep. sale went down last time it was a it was a five acre property and uh -huh. had a a mobile home already on it that needed to be cleaned up and fixed a little bit uh but they was asking for 10 grand down and i think the total on that was like 150 um so that's what i was trying to do there and it's okay. a little, little bit down from my house so i'm looking yeah. for that uh kind of something yeah. like that but i'm also just if i can find a property like five ten acres in my price range i'd rather do that and then uh i can figure out the living situation after that if i have to give me a little yeah. bit to find a mobile home and put it on there you know so it's really interesting you know as we're gathering information he's talking about his next play and the, the next move for somebody, for me with sellers, is less relevant if it's vacant because it's not impacting them in any way. Yeah. But if they're living in the property, you better make sure you're overcoming any objections about moving out of that property. Yep. When are they moving? Are they able to? Do they have the means? Do they have the money? Those all can be things that will kill a deal. Yeah. And I've had so many times in the past where we just can't get the closing because I can't get that seller to figure out where they're going to go, how they're going to get there. Yep. Right. So it becomes more relevant when they're living in the property. And he is interesting to hear. I mean, what do you think? You're going to buy, what does he say, like five to 10 acres mm -hmm. with a mobile home for 10 grand was the deal he missed. Yep. So clearly he's thinking, if I can get 20 out of my house, I'm going to go buy something off the grid or whatever and take care of my housing problem is, yeah. is kind of what he explained. So there, there's, there's a couple levels to this. And I think most people stop at fact finding. But for me, what's more important than fact finding is profile building, mm. right? What's the profile of the human being that I'm dealing with, right? You mentioned something earlier. I called it. How did I know five seconds into the conversation that this guy was a prepper and he's yeah. wanting to live off the off land? Off the grid, yeah. Because I listened, right? He wants to go off grid. He wants to, why? Because usually people fit into certain categories as humans do. There's a handful of types of personalities and we're going to go into our directions. When you can start building those profiles, it makes it so much mm -hmm. easier, right? And we're in rural Texas. Yep. You can hear he's got like a Southern accent. Like he's yep. kind of fitting the profile. Correct. And so there's layers to mirroring, right? And it's at the, at the beginning, it's easy and you probably should mirror tonality and pace. That's important, right? How fast are they speaking? What's their tone? But when you start whoop, getting really, there you go. Um, when you really get into it, it's much more important, in my opinion, to get to that lead, like start understanding their character. And I think when you can do that, then you're really like, that's when you're really hitting the nerve. Yeah, good. Well, we've got just like a couple minutes left on this call and then we'll wrap this up. So okay. let's, hear, let's hear how we end up here. I have to give me a little yeah. bit to find a mobile home and put it on there, you know? Okay. Yeah, because my investors are probably going to want to try to do something fairly soon. You know, 30, 45 days is, is fine. You know, so if you could, if we could make that work, that'd be great. I mean, I'll be flexible with you, but that'd be great. Oh, yeah. Like, like I said, the wife says, hey, go for it. I, I'll, you can come tomorrow and take my house over and give me the check. Yeah, you know, you're going to so. be living off the grid with the bears if you do this. Yeah. Now, do you know why I said bears? Do you know the story behind that? No. What, so Vina? Vina gave me a oh. word to say that I had to say <laughs> on every call. Did she really? So if you listen to these calls, I say bear and it's totally out of context yeah, sometimes. Yeah. That was pretty good, actually. Yeah, that was good. You're living with the bears. You know, I don't even know if there's bears in Texas, but that's why I said that. It made no sense, but that's why. Yeah. But guys, you know what? Like, I see people that do sales and they do calls and they're all stressed out and wound up. And yeah. I have so much fun talking yep. to people. I think people are fascinating. They're interesting. I like talking to people. Yep. And if you can't get your head around that and have fun with this. You're going to quit. You're going to quit. You're, you're going to quit every time. It. Yep. And I can tell instantly, I'll, I'll talk to like some of my students and I can just see this anxiety and this stress and this, and I'm like, there's no way you're going to be on the phones all day nope. with that attitude. Nope. And you it gotta comes through. Up. People feel it. Mm -hmm. If you're bringing that energy to your calls, you, they don't need to see you. They feel it. Correct. A million percent. We kind of want, and I want to do that and 
So yeah, let me yeah do what you got to do on your end. This is gonna it's like a ninety percent deal. Sure. Well, let's I let's do this. Why don't, why don't we get your? Do you want to get your wife on the phone and I'll just explain to her the deal? Oh no, I'm gonna have to talk to her like in private. I'm telling you, I'm not the guy. Well, let me talk to my wife and never call you back. I'm gonna call you back. So that was my worry, and he actually <laughs> he picked up on it because people use "I gotta talk to my spouse" as an objection, mm-hmm. and it's not a real objection. They use it as a way to get off the phone. Yep. Right. So you guys are gonna hear that all the time. I gotta talk to my lawyer. I gotta talk to my wife. So you really need to be able to work through those things. Otherwise you're going to just, okay, talk to your wife and then you never hear from them again. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any ideas on like, how do you navigate around? I got to talk to my lawyer. I got to talk to my wife. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a case by case. And I want to give a summary once we finish with okay. this call of it. Um, but yeah, there's a couple ways I go about doing it. And sometimes if they're talking to a lawyer, I'll ask them. I'm, I'm so sorry, Jared. Did I do something to, to lose your trust in this yeah. conversation? Yeah. Right? And because it's a pattern interrupt question. Mm-hmm. Like, no, what do you mean? Right? Well, because normally when somebody says something like that, it means I may have done something. Right? Mm-hmm. And it lets them realize the gravity of what they requested. Yeah. And so sometimes that's, a, that's just one of many alternatives. Yeah. Now, I think, I think he legit actually needs yeah, to talk to his I, wife I, yeah, I agree. on this one. I yeah. don't, and, I, and, I, and the reason why is because I keep coming back around to it. Yeah. And he keeps saying a little bit more. Yeah. So, right. So guys, I'm trying to uncover, is the wife thing real yeah. or is he just saying that? And well, that's important. You need to isolate the objection. You yes. need to understand what's actually happened. Otherwise you're going to get blindsided and you're going to get people that never call you back because you didn't actually find out. I'm going to call you back because I want to get out of this house. So I, just I, don't want you to, I just don't want you to screw it up, Johnny. And I'll, I'll be able to explain it to her really good. <laughs> So I'm having fun here. That's so good. you guys can't I, I said, I want you to, because we're talking sub two. Yep. So when he sits down with his wife, I, I know he's that. not going to pitch it right. I love that. I don't want you to screw it up. Oh, yeah. No, I won't. I won't. Okay. Oh, you know what? When I get home, I'll probably call you. What time do you work? That's what happened. Yep. Is this your cell phone or work number? Yeah, it's my work number, but I'm going to be around for a while. I'm on a I'm on a later time zone. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm three o'clock here. I'm here. Then I got to get this and I got about an hour drive home. So I'll be home about 430. Five o'clock, and when I get home, I'm gonna call this number back and talk to you, and I'll, I'll let you talk to her. Okay, perfect. Because then I can I can make sure she's comfortable and answer any questions and all that. In fact, Correct. maybe what we do is is uh, is Ella, my helper. She could she'll love her. Ella's super nice, and she What's could talk name? to you like Ella. That that's that's my daughter's name. Oh yeah, E L L A. Yep, E L L A. Yep, yeah, Ella's the best. Name. Yeah, she's super nice, and she'll she can talk to your wife and make sure she's comfortable with everything. I mean, it's a little different what we're doing, but it's a great solution. Yeah, yeah, man, I know she's just gonna freak out, and be like, oh, we need to find something, we need this and that, and that, that's the, that's the part she freaks out about because we got five kids and everything, so she's just gonna freak five out about kids. that. that yeah. yeah, what's that like? Having we got two kids? Kids. Five kids in an RV. Yeah, that's why we got the house. So what's that like having five kids? <laughs> <laughs> Should have been like, that's it? <laughs> wow, five. What's that like having five kids? That's why we got the house. It's a five-bedroom, two-bath house. So, and you're going to move, move them on some property with, with the bears. Yep. Correct. Mundo. Man, you're gritty, dude. So, but yeah, let me, uh, let me do this, hey, and then I'll give you a call back. Okay, let's get it done. Appreciate right. you, Johnny. Talk to you soon. Okay. All right. Can I give a full breakdown on yeah. this thing? I'll, Over I'll, all your thoughts. Okay. Guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break this down from a couple of perspectives because I love this call a lot. And what I want to do is, if you're cool with it, I want to break down what you did. And then I'd like to present some alternatives for different personality types. Great. Love it. Okay. So first and foremost, one thing I notice about you on the call, there's a couple of things that stand out about you. One, you're extremely likable. Right, you do a great job of mirroring their personality type to a degree that they feel like they're just talking to a buddy. Right, that's very intentional. I can hear the way you do certain phrases, the, the the phrases that you that you use, the questions that you ask. It's intentional. Now, why is that important? Well, guys, a lot of you guys, especially when you're new, you hear somebody like a Jerry in conversations, and you'll be like, oh, well, you know, it just, I mean, well, that's just him. No, it's not just him. Yes, it is just Jerry to a degree. But everything Jerry did in that conversation was very intentional. Some people think that a good salesperson is one that just sounds, they got the one-liners and they, they have the phrases locked up. And, and they get the gap. Yeah, yeah, that's really not what it is. Mm-hmm. As a general rule, in my experience, the best closers in the game sound like they're just having a conversation. 
But what you don't hear is they're underneath all of that. They're plotting their questions, three or four questions ahead. They're listening to what they're saying. They're saying things in certain ways. And I can hear you doing that in the conversation. The way you make jokes, you do a fantastic job of making people feel special, mm. right? And so as a result, it allows you, so let's go to, go, go to the next step. It allows you to get away with things that other people wouldn't, mm. right? So one example is you're like a dog with a bone on this deal. We are like, okay, well, let's do this. Well, no, let's get your wife. Let's do this. Let's do that. Some of you guys will hear that and you'll say something like, oh, well, I can't do that because I don't want to sound pushy. And the reality is, is you might sound pushy. The reason Jerry gets away with it is because he knows when to pull back. He knows when he's gone half of a centimeter too far mm -hmm. and he knows how to pull it back. He knows how to deflect and make a joke. So that way there, that, that uncomfortable feeling that starts getting, getting pulled up. Uh, so what happens if you want to do that and you're not Jerry? What do you do? as an alternative. Mm. Pace is a good uh, example of an alternative. Pace very rarely sounds that interested in the conversation. Mm. Pace will actually do the opposite. And he'll be like, I'm not your buyer. I'm not your buyer. I'm the not your buyer. Away. Right? Yeah. And he goes so far into the takeaway that I'm like, bro, you're about to lose this deal. Right? Like, I, gen I don't even think you want the deal. And yeah. I know you actually want the deal. Right? Yeah. So those are two different sides of the spectrum. Pace, as an example, will be like, I don't want the deal. I don't want it at all. Just leave me alone. Stop talking. Why are you still talking to me? I don't want this house. I already told you I don't want the house. And then Jerry's like, but why do you need to talk to your wife? I'm better than your wife. You're going to mess this up, dude. Let me do the deal. How do you guys both pull that off? It's because you guys, in my opinion, are comfortable enough in your skin that you said, this is the strategy that I'm going to take, but I know when to course correct if I need to, right? Well, what happens if you're not Jerry Norton or Pace Morby? What do you do? I would suggest maybe find the balance. What's the balance? I think there's a couple things you can do for balance. One, this goes back to knowing yourself. Know what your comfort level in communication is. Jerry's good enough with that aggressive, jovial approach because he understands that when the room gets a little bit awkward, he can make a joke and he can make it right. So if you guys have been the type of personality, you're the life of the party, you're the person in the room that kind of controls the room when you walk in there, or you're really good at navigating those things, then maybe you'll feel comfortable taking a Jerry approach because you know that you can redirect if you need to. But if you're new to this, and you're not sure how to navigate those conversations, you're not sure, what I would say is I would be a little bit middle of the road in those conversations. So what does that sound like? So when we're, we're talking about, let's go straight to the close. Let's go all to the point. You started out, you asked him for the number out of the gate, right? Step one, I think that's a great idea. Get to the elephant in the room. Guys, the hard questions are usually where the gold is. Ask the hard questions. It's going to be awkward. It's going to be uncomfortable, but it's even more awkward when they ghost you and you don't get a deal, right? Ask the hard questions. Or you spend a half an hour and they don't even want to sell And they don't even want to talk to you, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So... Be okay out of the gate getting all of the information, right? But let's get to the end. So we're talking about that close. One thing that I would I deploy as a rule for myself, it's a rule on my acquisitions team. It's called the if I could, would you, right? What's the if I could, would you? It's a good way to be able to get the commitment from the seller that Jerry got if you don't have the same ability to navigate higher pressure or a, a, you know, those types of jovial conversations. So what does that sound like? We're getting to the end. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Yeah, that sounds good. Can you do 15? Can you do, or can you do 25? Can you do 30? I'm not answering any, well, I'll probably do the pull act. I don't know if I can do that. I'm not mm -hmm. sure that's gonna work. Let, let's do this, right? You wanna talk to your wife, you wanna do all these things. Let me ask you a question. If I can do $20,000 today, would you do it? Are, are you signing today or it, that's it? So that's what the, if I could, would you, right? And here's how I normally phrase it. I'll say, if I can do this today, you got to talk to your wife. But if I can get this done on my side, because I'm not sure, to be completely honest, and then I'm throwing some, some, some issues about the deal. To be completely honest with you, you already listed this once and it didn't sell, right? I understand that things popped up, but what that usually tells me is there might be something wrong with the property. There might be more going into this mm -hmm. that, I'm, that I'm not expecting, but that's okay, right? Here's my question. If I'm able to get this done for you today, are you guys signing today or is there something else that you need to think about? Mm -hmm. Right? You're and uncovering the objection right and there. And I'm uncovering it. And I'm making and I'm asking that second half. I'm not just asking if you're signing today. And I don't care if you say, yeah, I'm signing today. Okay, you're signing today. If I can do this, are you sure you're signing today or is there something else? I'm asking if there's something else to uncover that. And then I'm going to use that as, okay, so here's what I'm going to do, right? Ideally, is there a way we can put this on hold and have this conversation now? Because 
I've been doing this for a long time. It's very complicated explaining this. I don't want you to explain it. You get your wife scared, you know? So this is in a middle of the road approach that you can take as an alternative. Um, and then, yeah, that's that. If I could, good, would you work every time? The other thing I like about that is it, uh, it makes it um, non-aggressive so that they can honest answer or they can answer honestly. Yep. Because when you say, like I'll say, I'll say it like that and I'll add a little piece to it. I'll say, if I could, and I don't know if I can. That's it. I don't know if I can. But if I could, yep. are you ready to do this today? Yep. And now what that does is it lets, it takes the pressure off of them where they're like, okay, well, hypothetically, and since we're being hypothetical, I'm going to be honest about where I'm at right now. Yeah. Whereas if you're like, sign right now, what's the problem? Now they're, they're in a, like a pressure situation. It takes some pressure off when you say, I don't even know if I can, but if I could, Correct. where are you at? So what's, what's the emphasis here, guys? Now that we're peer, peeling back the layers, if you will, on sales conversations, we use the pace example where he's all the way back. I'm not your buyer. I'm not your buyer. Next thing you know, they're chasing him down. Yeah. You got you where yeah. you're like, dude, just why do you need to talk to your wife? I'm cuter than her. Why don't you just sell yeah. me the house today, right? <laughs> um, and then you got this option of the middle. What's the point? What's the takeaway? Guys, there is more than one way to skin yeah. this cat, right? You just have to be comfortable in your approach. But whatever approach you choose, commit and approach it with control and confidence because that's how you get to the end of these conversations and get people saying, no, I promise you, I'm genuinely serious. I'm going to do this. I'm going to follow up. I really want to get this deal done. Yeah. Love that. Great overview. Very cool. Well, guys, this was a really long video. Hope you got a ton of value out of that. A couple of things before we wrap up here. Um, we've got some links with some free resources, some scripts and some other really great stuff. Feel free to go click those links, download that again, totally free. And then also I wanna invite you to check out Dan's training. He's got a really advanced training on how to master these skills that we're talking about here uh, as we've gone through this video on, these, on this call. And so if you wanna learn how to know what the nuance is, how do I have the confidence, when do I ask the right questions, in what order, and, and really how to dial in a very effective process and get good at it, then I wanna invite you to check out that training. There's a link there and, and go check that out. And guys, we're going to do, I think, a couple more calls in this series. So if you found that helpful, let us know as well. Leave a comment, let us know, and, and give us some feedback. If you have a question about, hey, why'd you do that? Why'd you do this? Or, or even if you've got feedback, like I would have said this, or maybe I would have said that, we'd love to hear that as well. Um, I try to be a, a, a perpetual learner in this business, so I'm always open to, to learn more. And, and again, thank you, Dan, also for your expertise. And I'm learning 100%. so much from you too. So likewise, likewise. Okay, and we'll see you guys on the next video.